All right, everyone, so we're back. Now we're gonna deploy our vSphere 7.0 host. If you recall from my earlier design, I'm gonna deploy a total of four hosts. I'm gonna use two for my compute cluster and two for my edge cluster. Again, it's not a requirement that you break it out that way and you have a dedicated edge cluster by any means. It's just the way I prefer to do it and there is some idea around best practice for it in a production environment. In this case, I just like the segmentation so that I can show you networking on the edge, which is done a little bit different versus a regular vSphere host or an NSX phrase a transport node. So that said, we need to deploy four vSphere 7.0 hosts. So let's get started with that. Now, if you recall from the earlier design video or, or the lab setup video, I mentioned my lab at home is actually three physical hosts. So uh, this is basically the, my host. So I have a host in here in this cluster, it's just a single host. I have another one in here, which is just a single host. You can see right here. And then I have this last host right here. So I have three physical hosts. Uh, for today, we're gonna deploy all of these nested vSphere 7.0 hosts onto this cluster. Now, the way to kind of think about this for my lab is since I'm nesting everything, I'm gonna import these four hosts that we create into our new vCenter that we created. So the end result is I'll have kind of a standalone, brand new environment that's separate from everything you see here. The goal there is then that it will look like a real environment. It would look the same as if you were doing it at work where you had you know, an actual proof of concept of NSXT or, or maybe just a greenfield NSXT deployment. I didn't wanna mingle you know, or co-mingle all of my home lab stuff with all of the NSXT stuff. And the benefit to nesting too is that you can kind of segment things. So that way if you mess up something or you break something, you can easily blow it away and start from scratch instead of having to re-image a whole host. So that said, I'm gonna kind of go through this relatively quickly because the setup is honestly a little bit time consuming, but it is pretty simple. So first we're gonna create a new VM. So I'm gonna go here uh, to my host. I'm gonna right click and go to new virtual machine. And I'm gonna create a new one. I don't have any templates or anything. For this, I'm gonna call it MG host one. And I'll make sure I'll put it there. And I'm gonna make sure here that it's on the right host. In this case, it's 254.20, which is where I want it. Uh, here, I'm gonna select a data store. All the defaults are good. I can leave this the same, no need to worry about that. For guest OS, you can actually go to other and you can actually select uh, vSphere ESXi 6.5 or later. It will say it's not supported, but that's really more of a warning for people trying to do this in production. So we're gonna hit next. All right, so from a hardware standpoint to run nested ESX, there's a few things we have to do. So I'm gonna go kind of top to bottom. Um, first, the CPU. Uh, I'm going to enable, wherever it is, hardware virtualization. And I also like to enable uh, MMU. So this one is really critical. The hardware virtualization is what's actually going to allow us to run nested ESX. So I'm going to minimize that. For memory, I'm going to go with 12 gigabytes for my compute host where I'm going to run my VMs. And I'm going to do 10 for my edge host. Now you certainly don't need this much memory. I just have it, so I go ahead and use it. But again, you know, feel free to experiment with less. Now on the hard disk side, one of the big things I like to do is thin provision everything. By default, it's thick. So it's gonna take up all 40 gigs on my local drive the minute I create this drive. If I do thin, it's only gonna take what it needs. Now I am gonna create a second hard disk. So what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm just gonna install ESX on this. And yes, this is way overkill. You can install ESX with a four gig thumb drive. Uh, but again, I'm thin provisioning and it's default and I'm lazy, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, but the other drive is actually gonna be used for my local data store. So when I do deploy my guest VMs on top of this host, I'll have somewhere to store those files. Uh, and that's primarily because I don't have any kind of shared storage in my home lab. So I'm gonna hit add new device, hard disk, and this should be it right here. And this one is, you have to remember again, the thick provision, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make this 250 gigs. Uh, let's see, for our network, we wanna make sure we have network access for this. Um, so I'm actually gonna go with all VLAN DPG. So this is, I'm basically I'm gonna trunk all VLANs to this VM. And then when I go actually into the host and do the network configuration, I'll make sure I tag the management VLAN appropriately. Um, as I mentioned, so keep in mind, we're treating this like it's an actual host. 
So I want to have a bunch of network interfaces. So I'm actually going to do four interfaces and I'm just going to go bang those out real quick to match this one. All right, so that looks good. Um, one thing left is I need to select the ISO. So this is actually going to be the vSphere 7.0 ISO that I'm going to install off of. To do that, I'm going to go to new CD DVD drive and I'm going to make it Kana data store ISO file. Just kidding. So I'm going to select my local data store, which is where I've already uploaded the file ahead of time. And I'm going to select this guy right here, VMVisor installer 7.0. You need to make sure also you hit connect, pretty common errors to skip that and then uh, it won't work. It won't see the, uh, the ISO. So I'm going to connect that and I think I should be good. So let's hit next and finish. So that was pretty quick. Now we're going to go ahead and power on that VM and see if it works. And this should bring us to the ESX installer. So I'm going to open up the web console. So now we're ready to actually install ESX 7.0. So I'm going to pull up my on-screen keyboard. I find it's easier for me and my Mac. I'm actually accessing this uh, Windows VM through remote desktop. It seems like some of the remote key mappings and that kind of thing don't work really well for me. So I actually really like using the on-screen keyboard. It just makes it easy. So I'm going to pull that up. I'm just going to keep that right here while I'm going through this. So uh, first I'm going to hit enter to proceed here, F11 to accept the terms. Now it's going to ask us which drive do we want to install ESX onto. As I mentioned, 40 gigs is a huge overkill for this, uh, but I just like to leave it to the default and it's thin provision. So I'm going to leave that at 40 gigs and hit enter. I'm going to leave my keyboard mapping the same, throw in my password. And F11 one more time to install. All right, so the installation finished. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter to reboot. And we should be good once it comes back up. Uh, ESX installation completed, the node rebooted, and now it's pulling an IP via DHCP. Now I'm okay with the IP it's pulling, but I don't want it to be DHCP. So I am gonna go in and statically configure that. Um, this is also a good opportunity to show you guys how to tag the management traffic of the ESX host. Keep in mind, we're trunking all VLANs to this host. So let's say your native VLAN or otherwise the VLAN that's not tagged, which by default would be VLAN Know, essentially no VLAN, right? It'd be VLAN one pretty much. Um, that's not tagged, right? So whatever subnet that is, this host is gonna reach out on that and try to get an IP by default. But let's say your management is VLAN 50. Well, to do that, you're gonna have to go in here. And again, I'm gonna use my on-screen keyboard to hit F2 to customize the system. Throw in my credentials here, I'll minimize that. Now, if you go down to Configure Management Network, you can see here, if I hit Enter, um, it shows VMNIC0, that's my interface, uh, out of the host, and VLAN is shown as optional. So there's no VLAN, which means essentially I'm using the native VLAN. As I mentioned in, in my lab, this works out fine because I'm good with that network, uh, but if you wanted to put a VLAN in, that's where you would do it. Uh, like I said, mine is good. I just want to change it to static so it keeps that IP. So I'm going to go to IPv4 Configuration, I'm going to go down to set static and I'm going to retype this. And everything else is good. I didn't change the IP, I just made it static. I'm going to hit enter. And while I'm here, I'm actually going to set my DNS to be the right DNS because it actually pulled the wrong one. We'll fix that and I'm going to add a DNS suffix as well. All right. So to get out of here, I'm going to hit escape. It's going to ask me if I want to restart the management network. I do want to restart it, uh, especially if you change an IP. That's important to do. Uh, and I also like to go down to test management network before I leave here just to make sure I have reachability so I'm not running in circles troubleshooting something. 
So I'm gonna hit test management network, leave the defaults there. Essentially, it's gonna to try to ping my default gateway as well as my DNS server. And as you can see, everything checked out fine here. So this host is done. So I'm gonna exit out of here and that's where we'll leave this host. So we're done with this host. If we go back uh, here, we see we have one, we have three more to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. I'm gonna follow the exact same process. I'm not gonna change anything between them and I will unpause it once I complete that. So as you can see here, the host finished deploying. So I now have MG host one, host two, and I have MG edge host one and edge host two as well. So the last thing I'm gonna do before we go on to actually adding these into vCenter is just try to ping the host on the management IP we gave them. If you run into issues here, you definitely wanna stop and troubleshoot that until you can actually ping them because if vCenter can't reach them, you won't actually be able to import them into your new vCenter that we created in the last video. So let's check them one by one. So I'm gonna open up a command prompt and let's resize that a bit. And we're just gonna ping each of these one by one. So this is host one, which looks good. Host two, which also looks good. And scroll down. This is our edge host one. And finally, uh, where'd my screen go? There we go. Edge host two. All right, so as you guys see, we have reachability. So I'm gonna cut this one off and we'll pick up when we actually add them into vCenter and do some of our kind of core vCenter config right before we get to the actual NSX stuff.